Good afternoon and welcome to the beautiful island of Pedek, also known as Birthplace of the Winds. Here we are with Bird Unit for a special bonus episode of Fogbound on an Icicle. This is Adek, Alaska. And we left home almost 24 hours ago. One of the most remote islands in the world. Happy to be here. And we're here to honor Grandpa Frank's memory. And boy, are we going to have a good time. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Okay, so you have your door code. Um, if you uh, need anything, let me know. Here we are in the luxurious lodge provided by the Aleutian Outfitters. The accommodations had everything you would have at home. Big comfy beds, bathroom, washer, dryer, fridge, stove, pots, pans, silverware, dining table, and a couch. There was something special about sleeping in the 1950s army housing, a time capsule, a chill in the air, but toasty under the covers, otherworldly, at least other timely. We made the journey to ADAC for two reasons. First, to add a personal ending to the films Mark made documenting my father's mission on ADAC in 1942. And second, to spend time as a family together, making memories that will last a lifetime. Oh wait, there's a third reason, to fish. Mark found fish on the first day, as soon as we got off the plane. Fishing off the jetty, he caught black rock fish, and at Lake Andrew, he caught Dolly Varden. He never met his grandfather, but fishing must be in his DNA. We did it, Grandpa Frank. We saw some trout. That's a big one. Well, these are small. Actually. Oh, I see. It's two. Yeah, two of them for each of us. <laughs> it's a good start. It's a good sign. That we got him on the first day here. All right. There it is, right there. You see that? That little cliff. It's like a mound of dirt. It's actually like 40 feet tall or something, maybe. But, and then there's another little one right over here. But this is the main airport strip right here where we came in and landed in the plane earlier today. And right there, I think was the historical steel mat runway as well. And that's right there next to that cliff is where Grandpa Frank did the belly landing in the B-24. And I'll put the picture in there so you can compare it. But in the picture you can see he's right up next to that cliff on the steel mat runway. This is it right here, the interlocking steel mat runway that Frank talks about in the newspaper article. This is the runway he landed on in his B-24. They came in with troops, stopped up the water to make the land less marshy and laid down this mesh. And within 10 days, they were landing and flying planes out of 
payback because they thought the Japanese were close on Kiska and they too. So it was quite an effort that the military put in to keep us safe. And this is evidence of it. So I'm happy we found it and it makes it real. We're here on the side of that cliff where Frank did the belly landing of the B-24. It would have been right along there or somewhere. Of course, this cliff is about a thousand yards long or a quarter mile long or something like that. It's pretty long, this cliff. But in that picture, you see a bunch of guys actually standing on the top of this cliff looking down at the plane. And the plane is just kind of in two pieces right up next to the side of this cliff. And you might wonder, why do I keep talking about this cliff? But it's important because it's one of only two really main pieces of evidence that we have about Frank's time here. We have the newspaper article and then that picture of the crashed B-24. So this right here, now as we're standing right here is actually as close as we can get, I think. As close as we can get to that B-24 and as close as we can get to an actual known location of Grandpa Frank, right here. And you can kind of see too how there's these boggy little ponds over here because that's because this whole runway originally was one big marsh area it probably looked a lot like these little boggy ponds and then they put the steel mat runway down where where you see the airport runway now but if you remember in the video you see the planes landing in a foot deep of water this surface was not to be the usual concrete runway of an airport, but a steel one whose sections had been prefabricated in American mills. It was put down by the infantry, of course, in 36 hours. A million and a half square feet of it. A new pilot must learn to side-slip through local squalls and sit her down in a field rimmed by mountains and under a half foot of water. When I came down, part of the steel mat which formed the runway on the hard tundra whipped up and over the rear end of the ship. The tail and part of the fuselage parted company with the rest of the plane and one man, my radio gunner, was killed. Someone mentioned lunch. Yep. All right. That's what we're gonna do. All right. Quick dog. Lunch time. This is one of the few remaining Quonset huts on Adak. One of only two we found.
got to be careful. There's lots of like broken glass and rusty nails. Some old beds just sitting here. This would have been a cool Quonset hut to live in. It's got a nice view. There goes the boat. One of the Aleutian Outfitters boats, probably. <laughs> There's this little bird hanging around watching me. Air raid bunkers, I'm guessing. Big old heavy steel door. During defensive actions, the Navy, the Army Air Corps, and later the Air Force had facilities on ADAC. In 1990, over 5,000 people were at the Naval Air Station, including military and their dependents, along with civilian employees. The military mission at ADAC was officially ended on March 31, 1997. We're looking at the military housing where they all lived during their assignment on ADAC. With a bit of imagination, we can picture the families who once called these apartments home. With all of our exploring, it was time to fill up the tank. There is only one station on the island and it's not easy to recognize. It's just a little hut with one pump for regular and another for diesel. Self-service, no frills, no nonsense. Price per gallon, $6 a gallon. <laughs> when was the last time you seen a gas pump with rotating numbers? My father wrote that there were fish as big as your arm on ADAC. He wasn't just telling a tall tale as Texans are known to do, because Mark scouted around until we came to Finger Bay, where hundreds and hundreds of pink salmon were running upstream. Nearby, we noticed one vigilant golden eagle perched above the entrance to the spot, and a bald eagle also jealously guarding the territory. I tagged him as jealous because he swooped close over Mark's head while Mark was fishing. While daylight hours were few during the month of August, we made the most of every minute. 
out of the house by first light, we packed our pockets with protein bars and filled our canteens, then circumnavigated the island, stopping to see all the sights. Only 100 people live there year round, so most times we never saw anyone on the roads and we'd have whole lakes, beaches, and trails to ourselves. I'm hungry and you're on top of my fish pile. <laughs> All right. Woo. <laughs> All right, now that is a pretty fish. Look at that, guys. Pink salmon. Pretty nice and silver. All right, we got him. Took his head off already, so he couldn't swim away. Trout as big as your arm. There you go, Grandpa Frank. Nice and silver one, just for you. We did it for you, Grandpa Frank. And for dinner tonight. Triumphant. Mark with the pink salmon. Beautiful silver color. Lots of meat on there. And stole it from the eagle. Yep. That is the black rockfish. Comes right out with the barbless hook. And those are very good eating and plentiful here. We're on the jetty down at ADAC. Let's catch some more. How big was it? About a pound.
Pretty big one. Black rockfish. That's like a two pounder almost. All right, getting big. I would be keeping them, except we've already got more fish than we can eat. Getting stuck. <laughs> the bird says nice one. You should have been a birdologist. <laughs> Ooh, boy, he cut me up on the rocks. That last one. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Bird's ready to go to the store. <laughs> I used to drive Joan crazy when we were touring all over Europe and You'd be ready to go? All I wanted to do was go to the stores and she wanted to go to the cathedrals and the museums mm. and <laughs> I wanted to go shopping Some things never change mm -mm. All I wanted to do is stay here till I could stay here till 9 o'clock Okay, mm -hmm. Roberta's ready to see the store It's at the old pizza hut we met lots of friendly people. The outfitter, Scott, with his frontiersman tales of wrestling with elk. Our neighbor, the airport manager who gave us a can of peas and homemade fireweed jelly. The TSA agent also ran a grocery store after work, Monday through Friday in the old Pizza Hut building. You could only buy canned and frozen goods, no perishables. Why don't you get some? I'll help you eat it. What, bacon? Yeah. We'll eat the whole thing. We got two days. You you don't have anything for you. I got, I got um, peas, peas and, and nuts. nuts. Get some bacon. I never caught these before. They're like a trout, but they have these orange spots. Oh, he doesn't want to hold still. This is a nice rubberized net, so it's fish friendly. Alright, let's get him back. So this is, I think, a sockeye, 
at least that's what those guys said. See how it's got that real big beak? Look at that beak that it's got. It's got this real big beak. And it could be a pink, or I thought maybe a silver. Some of you guys in the comments can let us know, but some guys we just saw said these are sockeye. And this thing is huge, probably weighs 10 pounds. They have a good fight. A good fight, too. And it's kind of amazing to catch them here because it's so windy. You'd never think you'd get them here, but they're here. So let's get them back. Thanks, fish. And, and that fish is bigger than my arm, so. <laughs> Again, this is all for you, Grandpa Frank. Trout bigger than your arm. We came back and saw him. up the mountain. Mark says only a mile or so. <laughs> I scared of a ptarmigan. Oh, yeah. And he went wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> Where did he fly? He went from the side of the road that way. Oh. Yeah. Not quite a quack, but a guttural. Yeah, yeah. 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 I heard him too yesterday. <laughs> Fields of green. Tall grass. Okay, we're on the northernmost end of Adak Island right now. This is a little cove, I don't know the name of it, but we're by the Lowrands station. And this is just a beautiful little cove, and it's got this rope to get you down the trail here. So I'm gonna go check it out and see if I can catch some fish down there. Wish me luck. Good luck. 
not. <laughs> we didn't even check that the rope was secure at the top. <laughs> got him look at the beautiful colors on there all right let's get him back I've returned I am so relieved I didn't have to come down and help you if you'd slipped on a rock or something. And I caught a fish too. I saw that. It's babies. It's two, four, six, like eight babies following the mama. She's got a black head and an orange beak.
Yeah. His partner is right there, see? I can't see him in the reel. Oh, now I do. Big old kelp fish. Big giant kelp fish. That's the biggest one yet. Awesome. Okay, hold it up again. Okay. Big giant kelp fish. Beautiful. So cool. Got you, buddy. All right, get you back. Fisherman Mark returns triumphant yet again. <laughs> what kind of fish was that? A big old kelp fish. Kelp? That was the one that was here last time. Big giant kelp fish. And last time he got away. So we came back 
a second day just to get him and we got him. Show him who's he, boss. He owns this whole little cove right here. That's his turf. You can't capture magic twice. This is pretty magical. Yeah. I might move over and get those three. Okay. It's a calm day today. ideal place. Green rolling mountains all around. Hiking partners. <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah. And he's taking care of me. Don't fall down. Look where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> what how how much elevation are we? 130 feet elevation. Oh, so you were right. I thought we were at a hundred. We're at least a hundred and sixty, two hundred feet now. We're seeing eagles perched on the highest peaks watching us anthropomorphically laughing at us. I'm out of breath and using the camera as an excuse to stop. The trails are muddy and steep and we're on our way to Lake Betty. Mark offered that I wait in the car and I said, what? Come all the way to Alaska to wait in the car? I don't think so. Yeah, come ahead, he says. It's just over the next ridge. And then it's another mile. Okay, here I come. We made it to Lake Betty. On the map it looks small, but it's pretty good size compared to where I come from. And Mark has picked his spot. We'll see if there's any fish here. But already we've had Quite a day getting up here. We passed Finger Bay and the eagles and the spawning salmon and the flyaway cattails. Although here they look like little puffy balls that I'm going to have to do research on when I get home. city noise. Up here all you can hear is the wind and you can see the water is calm. This lake, Be Lake Betty, we have it all to ourselves. Just think, all of this beauty, this serene spot, and we're the only ones here. 
if you wanted to be alone. Kate said I could have a place to go. Okay. Last cast of ADAC right here. <laughs> Plane leaving in the morning. See if we can get one more fish. There we go. One more for the books. Don't get a clip in the rock. <laughs> little guy for our last fish on ADEC. Boy, we had a good time, didn't we, Bird? We saw everything. We saw the steel mat runway, the Kwanzaa huts, the site of the B-24 belly landing, trout as big as your arm, as many fish as you could want, probably more fish than I've caught in one place in a long time. So thanks. This was all for you, Grandpa Frank, and he's been looking out for us, hasn't he? Any he, thoughts, Bird? He sure has, but that rockfish doesn't care a whit, so put him back in. Okay. We'll see you on the next one. Fog bound on an icicle. Over <sighs> and out. Bonus fish! Ah! Didn't leave you just yet, did we? Now that's a whopper black rockfish. Bonus fish! Okay. See you next time. Okay, final thoughts, bird. <laughs> I had to put on my wind pants because it was so damn cold down there. It's only in the 50s, but it, darn, it feels like it's the 40s or something. The wind is just blowing everywhere. <laughs> and we caught so many fish that uh, 
we probably caught every one of them in there at least once. And now we're gonna go home and chow down and have, have the blue plate special. <laughs> yeah. She she and we've already decided we're coming back. She said she's coming back. Coming back to ADAC because we had so much fun. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe next year. <laughs> Okay, bye. Bye.